Today we are going to discuss some more interview questions that are related to the C programming language and this is the part 4 of our C interview question series. So let's start. First question is what are static variables? So the variables that are declared using the keyword static are known as the static variables. They have a property of preserving their value even after they are out of their scope. Such variables have their scope restricted to the function in which they are declared. Let us understand the use of the static variables with the help of an example. Here we have taken a function whose name is fun. It takes no arguments and has integer as its return type. In its body, we have declared an integer variable count with the keyword static and have initialized it to 0. So now count will have all the properties of the static variable. In the very next statement, we have incremented this count and then we have returned the value of this count. Now inside the main function, there are two printf statements and both are doing that they are calling this function fun and at the same time they are printing the value of count. So the output is 1, 2. How is it possible? When function fun is called for the first time, this static int count variable is initialized to 0 and its value is incremented. So now count will hold 1 and this 1 will be printed using this printf statement here. Now since count is a static variable, so its value is preserved. Now when the function fun is called for the second time, then here the value of count is not again initialized to 0, but its previous value is preserved, that is 1. Now 1 is incremented and now the count variable will hold the value 2. Now this 2 will be printed using this printf statement over here. So the output we get is 1 and 2. Next question. Differentiate between calloc and malloc functions in C. So as we know that both these functions are used to dynamically allocate the memory in C programming language. What is the difference between them? First we will take a look at malloc. Malloc doesn't initialize the allocated memory, thus the memory that is being initialized by malloc holds the garbage values. Malloc takes only one argument and that is the size of the memory block to reserve the memory. Its syntax is void asterisk malloc within parenthesis the size of the memory block. The next is calloc. Calloc initializes the allocated memory block to 0. So the memory that is initialized by calloc will hold the value 0 and not the garbage values now. It takes two arguments. One is the number of the blocks to be allocated and the other is the size of each block. Its syntax is void asterisk calloc the number of the blocks that need to be allocated comma the size of each block. Next question is differentiate between actual parameters and formal parameters. Formal parameter, a variable and its type as they appear in the prototype of the function or method. Actual parameter, the variable or expression corresponding to a formal parameter that appears in the function or method call in the calling environment. Let us understand this with the help of an example. Here we are using recursion to calculate the factorial of a given number. So factorial is the name of our function that accepts one integer argument n and its return type is also integer. This int n is the formal parameter as it is appearing in the prototype of the function factorial. Inside its body we have calculated the factorial which is if n is greater than equals 1 return 
n into factorial n minus 1 which is nothing but the recursive calling is return 1. Inside the main we have a printf statement in which we are printing the value that has been returned by this factorial function and we are passing a value to it. Here we have passed 5. So this 5 becomes the actual parameter as it is corresponding to the formal parameter n and it appears in the function call. Here we are calling the factorial function and we have passed 5 so it is the actual parameter. Next question, what is the preprocessor directive in C? C preprocessor is just a text substitution tool. It instructs the compiler to do the required preprocessing before the actual compilation can be done. All the preprocessors command begin with a hash symbol. This is the hash symbol, the pound sign. It gets executed before the actual C program is being executed. Example, hash define that substitutes a preprocessor macro and hash include that inserts a particular header from another file. There are other examples of the preprocessor directives also. Next question, what is an array? An array is a data structure that stores multiple elements of the same data type. That is, it stores the homogeneous elements. It reserves the memory in a sequential manner, one after the other. Array data structures are static data structures. Thus, the memory size once defined cannot be changed later on in the program. There are three types of arrays, namely one-dimensional array, two-dimensional array and multi-dimensional array. Example, int a within square brackets we have specified 2. So 2 is the size of array and after the execution of this statement, an array of integer data type a will be created which has a size of 2. Within the square brackets, the dimensions are mentioned. Since there is only a single square bracket, it means it is a one dimensional array. Similarly, in the very next statement, we have mentioned int mat 3 and in the other square brackets, it's again 3. So it is used to declare a two-dimensional array. This will declare a two-dimensional array like a form of a matrix which will have three rows and three columns. So total of nine elements will be stored in mat. Next question. Which statement is better in terms of efficiency and why? x equals x plus 1 or x plus plus. So, x plus plus is efficient than x equals to x plus 1 because it is just a single instruction to the compiler while the other is not. So, increment operator is only a single instruction to the compiler which is more efficient. Next question is, what are the limitations of scanf function in C? So, the limitations of scanf function are as follows. The scanf function cannot work with a string of characters. It is not possible to enter a multi-word string into a single variable using the scanf function. Suppose, you have a variable in which you want to store your name. In that case, it is required that after the first and the last name, a space is needed. But if you are using the scanf function to store your whole name in a single variable, then it is not possible because scanf will just terminate the string as soon as it encounters a space character and it will only store your first name. So to counter this problem, the getf function is used which treats the spaces and tabs as a part of the input string and is terminated only when the enter key is pressed. Next question, write a program to swap two numbers without using the third variable. So here, 
we have declared two integer type of variables a and b. a is initially holding the value of 10 while b is holding the value of 20. After swapping, we need a to hold the value 20 and b to hold the value 10. There is a printf statement that is used to print the current values of a and b which is 10 and 20 respectively. Then there is a statement that states that in a store the sum of a and b. So the sum of a and b that is 10 plus 20 which is nothing but 30 will be stored in a after the execution of this statement. The very next statement states that b will hold the difference of a and b. So a which is now holding 30 and b which is still holding 20 will be stored in b that is 30 minus 20 which gives the value of b as 10 over here. In the next statement a will store the difference of a minus b that is it will store the value of a which is 30 minus the value of b which is 10 which gives the value of a as 20. So the current value of a is 20 while that of b is 10 and this will be printed when this printf statement is executed. Now we can see that the values of a and b are swapped and no third variable is used.